The focus of our group was abstract expressionism and we are going to analyze the standard variable and contrastandard qualities of abstract expressionist art using the uh, categories of art article written by Kendall Walton. We hope you enjoy our presentation. Dissatisfied with the provincial nature of 1930s American art, namely regionalism and social realism, artists turned to examples of European modernism for new inspiration in their work. The influence of surrealism's use of automatism or automatic drawing without conscious premeditated thought and cubist formalism greatly impacted a new category of art, later labeled Abstract Expressionism. Beginning in 1940 through approximately 1960 in New York, artists identified with Abstract Expressionism, or the New York School as it is often referred, broke away from the accepted conventions of this time period with their unique use of scale, technique, and subject matter. Similar to Surrealism's incorporation of Sigmund Freud's psychoanalytic research, Abstract Expressionism's association with Dr. Carl Jung's theories of universal human themes became an underlying topic for many of these artists as they sought new forms of expression. Early work in this category of art was characterized by the use of biomorphic and pictographic elements, along with the significant idea of direct expression derived from the influence of primitive art. The mid-1940s marked the later period of abstract expressionism, which was characterized by two primary approaches of expression. Gesturalism or action painting, a term created in 1952 by art critic Harold Rosenberg, emphasized the process of using gesture in individualistic ways, which acted as the artist's personal signature of his or her work. This is exemplified in paintings such as the Moon Woman from 1942 and Circumcision from 1946, both by Jackson Pollock, and also by William de Kooning's Woman One from 1950. Color field painting was the second approach in which large fields of pure color evoked transcendent and reflective emotional states as can be seen in Mark Rothko's Orange, Red, Yellow from 1961. Although abstract expressionism has been studied and analyzed using many different formats in the decades following when these works were actually produced, the philosopher Kendall L. Walton's 1970 article titled Categories of Art provides a unique perspective from which to further understand this movement's aesthetic properties. We have decided to start our presentation by discussing the variable qualities first because we believe they set the stage for the observable elements within each work of art. Variable qualities are the observable clues with which a work of art is determined as being consistent within the standard elements of a period of art. This includes the basic elements of the work such as color, value, line, and texture. This category also includes compositional layout, tone, and subject. The variable qualities discussed in regards to the chosen works by Pollock, Rothko, and de Kooning are intended to not make a conclusion about the standard or contrastandard aspects of each painting, but are objective observations removed from any conclusion of style or period.
The first selection from the Abstract Expressionist period is Circumcision by Jackson Pollock. The chaotic canvas contains bold colors framed by dark linear exteriors. Highlights are created by the use of brighter colors such as white and yellow, while the darker black and blue colors recede gently into the negative space. Despite the minor recession, there is little distinction between the positive and negative space, and the aggressive application of line creates the only real sense of depth and movement. The majority of the work does not include identifiable shapes within the gestured forms, though there are two distinct bird shapes, one at the bottom left and one at the top. In contrast to Circumcision, The Moon Woman, also by Pollock, features a series of thick black lines and curves that imply the presence of a woman. There is a partial depiction of a face in red resting on a black surface at the top of the figure. There are unidentifiable symbols, haloed in blue, along the left side of the work. Yellow and white wispy lines are laid on darker sections of green and red along the right half of the composition. And the figure's curved arm ends with gentle curves that imply fingers, which may be grasping a flower. Woman One by Willem de Kooning is the only image from our selections that clearly features an unmistakable figure. The woman, who stares intensely to our left, is comprised of aggressively gestured lines. Her mouth sneers in a toothy grin, and her wide eyes dominate not only her face, but also become the focal point of the painting. Proportions within the figure are drastically altered with large breasts, small forearms, and an undefined lap. The colors are primarily bright white, yellow, and pink, while the darker edges are depicted in gray, blue, and black. Little attention or detail is paid to the extremities, such as the toes and fingers, which resemble claws. Orange, Red, Yellow by Mark Rothko is a non-representational painting in which colors are layered in three rectangular shapes. The red background, which has a violet tint to it, peeks through the layers of orange and yellow shapes. The edges of the progressively large shapes as they descend from the top are rough and undefined. Each part of this painting is a fluctuation of value and intensity. When applying the Waltonian structure of categorizing art to abstract expressionism, the standard features consist of the recognizable properties by which the artwork is most readily identifiable. Standard features are the perceptually distinguishable characteristics or the basic qualities of the artwork, which offers no surprises to the viewer who is accustomed to seeing the artwork in that category. Abstract Expressionism consists of two primary styles, action painting and color field painting, each with its own set of standard features. The standard features of Abstract Expressionism action painting are shapeless characters, broad black lines, generous brushstrokes, as well as thrown, splashed on, stained, and dripped paint. There is an emphasis on the spontaneous, automatic, or subconscious creation, along with a well-thought-out planning of concepts. The standard features of abstract expressionism color field painting include large fields of flat, solid color spread across or stained onto the canvas, and large areas of unbroken surface on a flat picture plane. As its title suggests, Circumcision, January 1946, 
depicts a violent characterization of one of the oldest genital surgeries of mankind. In his painting, Pollock, with his fluid, expressive style, displays loosely drawn arrows, stick figures, ornamental markings, and an owl-like creature viewing the bloody scene. Characteristic to most of Pollock's action paintings are the shapeless characters, broad black painted lines, and generous brush strokes, all indicative of the standard features of abstract expressionism. Pollock's rhythm and the direction of his brush strokes are expressive of his way of becoming one with the art. In The Moon Woman from 1942, we see the depiction of a woman standing with both a frontal view and profile view of her face, which shows the contrasting perspectives of the serene in public and the dark and interior views of oneself. During the late 1930s, Pollock had begun incorporating imagery and mythical figures into his work. And with the influence of Charles Baudelaire's poem, Favors of the Moon, we find Pollock's interpretation of the fearful goddess. As with other Pollock action paintings, the Moon Woman exhibits the standard features we have become familiar with when viewing abstract art. The broad black line which serves as her backbone, dramatic brush strokes of generously applied paint, and the disfigured features of the woman. With an unsightly grin and gigantic eyes, Woman One from 1950 to 1952 is one in a series of paintings by de Kooning representing strong, vivacious women. De Kooning's use of intensely colored paint and aggressive brush strokes give the large breasted woman an even more in your face stance. Uncharacteristic of the standard features of abstract expressionism, Woman One depicts a recognizable subject in the painting. However, our familiar features include the broad black lines, which outline her body, dramatic brush strokes, along with splashed and dripped paint. Searching for their own independent style, painters Mark Rothko, Barnett Newman, and Clifford Still added a modern twist to abstract expressionism in the 1940s by abandoning all forms of figuration and adding large blocks of bold dramatic color. The color field style of painting gives artwork an immeasurable transcendental-like plane, merging figure and ground as one. Orange Red Yellow from 1961 by Mark Rothko is representative of the color field style of abstract painting. In color field painting, the standard features include large fields of flat, solid color spread across or stained onto the canvas, large areas of unbroken surface, and a flat picture plane. Contra standard features are those qualities that tend to disqualify a work of art from a particular category. These features can appear shocking or controversial, something out of the ordinary for that category. One example would be films without movement, or a Robert Rauschenberg collage combine that mixes both sculpture and painting. If two different, contra standard features also have the ability to threaten a particular category. Once a feature is no longer considered controversial or is no longer a misfit, it can become a standard feature. The feature or features can then extend the category or create a brand new one. Looking again at Willem de Kooning's Woman One, we see the influence of commercial illustration and advertising. This painting illustrates a recognizable figurative representation that was counter to later abstract expressionist action paintings. Similar to Cubism, de Kooning's figure has the appearance of space flowing through it, 
creating an illusion of the foreground and background blending. This illusion also creates less depth and more flatness in the painting. Another feature that is atypical for most action abstract expressionist paintings is that Woman 1 lacks the bold color palette. Instead, the artist uses a more subtle watercolor palette. Finally, de Kooning worked on this painting for over a year's time. As such, it lacks some of the spontaneity associated with action abstract expressionism. Moving on to Jackson Pollock's Circumcision, we see that it contains geometric forms and fragmented planes, similar to features seen in Cubist paintings. It also contains primitivist art features, such as sculptural and stick-like figures, along with mask-like faces. Circumcision also lacks the aggressive application of paint associated with other abstract expressionist works and was created before Pollock's use of his drip painting technique. Another early Pollock, the Moon Woman, still represents the figurative. This style of painting changed dramatically as the category moved into its mature phase. Similar to Woman One and Circumcision, the pictorial space lacks the aggressive and spontaneous brush strokes that were a staple feature of other action paintings. Additionally, the Moon Woman depicts the use of myth and symbolism. As the movement matured, there was more emphasis on the subconscious and automatic gestural painting. The last painting we will discuss in relation to contra standard features is Mark Rothko's Orange, Red, Yellow. As mentioned in earlier slides, it is non-representational and part of color field painting or post-painterly abstraction. This technique or feature became so common among a group of artists in the late 1940s that eventually it was an expansion of abstract expressionism. In contrast to action gestural painting, orange, red, yellow relies on color as its power of expression not on brush strokes or splashed paint. This painting, and others like it, works towards the 18th century idea of the sublime, which relates to man's spiritual connection to the universe, as well as the connection between nature and self. The colors are all-encompassing, there is no boundary to the painting, and it lacks the illusion of depth. Through the 19th and the 21st centuries, societies have digested many changes in the viewpoints of art appreciation. Early 19th century Kantian aesthetic doctrine and the ideals found in Romanticism brought forth ideas of aesthetics, la art pour la art, or art for art's sake, and other terms including disinterest, free, beauty, form, and the sublime to the forefront of artistic evaluation. Clement Greenberg proclaimed abstract expressionism and Jackson Pollock in particular as the epitome of aesthetic value. In general, there are three main viewpoints about how we perceive art. In a way, it separates the idea of an artistic versus aesthetic value of a work of art. The three main viewpoints include, number one, aesthetic formalism, a formalist view with an emphasis on beauty or the immediate experience, nothing but a sense of form and color needed. For example, Clive Bell from 1913 and Leonard Meyer from 1983. Number two, artistic formalism, an anti-formalist view with an emphasis on the importance of biographical, historical, psychological or sociological researches. For example, Kendall Walton from 1970, Arthur Danto from 1981, and Gregory Curie from 1989. And number three, moderate formalism, a melding of the above viewpoints, such as Nick Zengwill 
from 2001. Kendall Walton brings a strong argument against traditional formalist philosophies that the value of art is read solely through its initial aesthetic presentations. He argues that none of the aesthetic properties are purely formal. Through his standard, variable, and contrastandard definitions, Walton attempts to outline the process of how we view art based on our knowledge of the general categories of art. He emphasizes the importance of biographical, historical, psychological, or sociological researches to the value and understanding of an artwork. One of the problems with this viewpoint is that it assumes all viewers must have an educated and accurate understanding or connoisseurship of the category that the work fits into in order to appreciate art. The anti-formalist viewpoint does not account for the childlike wonder that can be found with viewing and appreciating art. As popular as Walton's view has been for over the last 45 years, contemporary critics and philosophers such as C. Dowling support the moderate viewpoint as they see the viewer as also having a sophisticated aesthetic sensibility and like the formalists agree, a connoisseurship of art history is not necessary to hold an appreciation of art. In the evaluation of abstract expressionist art, this anti-formalist theory may help the viewer better understand the artwork and its genius where it may not demonstrate its value in the immediate view. Here are the references that we used for both our presentation and the corresponding paper. We truly hope you enjoyed our presentation. Thanks for watching.